Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 52. It should say 52, not 51. Lesson number 52. Lesson number 52 out of the third edition, hence 3052. We are on page number 257. We are looking at example 2.9.2. Which deals with which deals with intersection of a line and a parabola. Intersection of a line and a parabola. Let's see what we have here. The parabola that is given to us in this example is very straightforward. It's a standard parabola sitting at the origin, nothing fancy about it. Very straightforward, very innocent parabola. You understand? It's about as innocent as you can get. Let's call this 2.9.2 A. In the book there is only one example like this. We're going to do two of them. One today and one tomorrow. So we're going to call them A and B. So here's our parabola. It says G of X is equal to Y which is simply X squared which is a standard parabola as we can see very easily which means when x is 0, y is 0 oh, sorry, when x is 0, y is 0, that's right at the origin when x is positive 1, when x is positive 1 or negative 1 when x is positive 1 or negative 1, y is 1 1, 1, when x is positive 1 or negative 1, y is 1 we could have drawn it freehand but I just wanted to do it with a scale because soon we're going to draw the line so we can see the point of intersection. Then we find out that when, when x is positive 2 or negative 2, y is going to be 4. Let's do that. When x is negative 2 or positive 2, y is going to be 4. Here's 1, 2, 3, 4, somewhere here. There you go. That's enough for us to do our parabola. Now I'm going to do freehand. There is our parabola. Something like that. Very standard, very innocent looking parabola. And then we are given a line. The line that is given to us is, is what they are calling f of x, which is simply y is equal to negative one half plus one and what negative one half x that is plus one and again for a straight line all we need are uh, all we need are two points and we can plot it so let's do that here when when x is equal to zero when x is going to be zero this quantity is going to drop out and y simply is going to be one when x is zero y is going to be 1. So let's do that. When x is 0, when x is 0, y is 1. So this is our first point. Let's put it in a different color. And then when x is equal to, let's pick another point for it. Let's put 2 for x. When x is 2, when x is 2, when we put a 2 here, when we put a 2 here, the 2 is going to cancel out here. And we're going to end up in negative 1 and a positive 1. y is 0 when x is 2. When x is 2, when x is 2, these two are going to kill each other, we're going to end up with negative 1 and positive 1, which is 0. So when x is 2, y is 0, right here. Very good, there is our line. There we go. That's about as best as we are going to get. And what we are interested in are these green points here. This, this point of intersection and that point of intersection. 
let's call them let's call them point A and point B. Point A, the one that falls in the first quadrant, I'm going to call it point A, and let's call this one point B, the second quadrant. But anyways, as we can clearly see, these are not some clean points where they intersect, where the two pictures intersect each other as nice whole numbers. They do not. Somewhere here, God knows what those values are of x and y, and only God knows what those values are of x and y. Let's find, let's find out if we can get that same knowledge that God has, shall we? Okay. And how do we do it? By solving them, by solving them simultaneously. So here's our equation for y, and here is our equation for x. Half x plus 1, we're going to equate the two. So when they intersect, when they intersect the x value and the y value, or whatever the x value, the x and the y, the, the point of intersection, they equal to each other. So if we, what we're looking for is finding out where do they intersect so that we can find out the coordinates of the point of intersection. y is equal to x squared, this quantity at the point of intersection has to equal that quantity. Because this quantity, negative half x plus 1 represents the y coordinate of the point of intersection, x squared represents the y coordinate of the, of the point of intersection, y coordinate of the parabola, and the y coordinate of the straight line, they have to equal to each other. We're just going to solve for this equation. Let's do this, shall we? Let's start by getting rid of this 2. Let's start by getting rid of this 2. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation, this side of the equation by 2, and that side of the equation by 2. And if you do that, we end up with 2x squared equals, and the reason we did that is because now this 2 and that 2, when we open the parentheses, are going to cancel out. I'm going to not show all this step, but these two, are, these 2 and that 2 is going to cancel out. That was the whole bloody point of it. And we end up with negative x. And then 1 times 2 is going to give us 2. Let's bring everything on the one side and write it in standard form of the quadratic equation so we can use the quadratic formula. So we have 2x squared. When we bring the x to the other side, it's going to become positive x. When we bring 2 to the other side, it becomes negative. In other words, subtract 2 from both sides and add x to both sides. There you go. There is our, there is our standard uh, quadratic equation in the standard form. The coefficient here is 1, which means our a is 2, our b is equal to positive 1, and our c is equal to negative 2. All we have to do is plug them in the quadratic formula and we are done. And what is the quadratic formula? Quadratic formula tells us that x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And where did it come from? The answer is very simple. Where did it come from? The answer is very straightforward, very simple. It fell from sky. You simply have to know it by heart. That's where it came from. There are some things that we have to know by heart before we sit for the exam. One of them being the quadratic formula. It comes in quite handy. So let's do it, shall we? Remember, negative b, b is equal to positive 1, so it's negative of a, of a, of a, of a 1, plus or minus b squared, which is going to be 1 squared, minus 4a, which is 2, c, which is negative 2, over 2 times a, 2 times a, which is 2. Now I'm going to erase this part. That's it, we're almost done. Let's see what this works out to be. Negative 1 plus or minus, okay, here we go. 4 times 2 times 2, four, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 4 is 16, so it's negative and a negative. Negative and a negative is going to become positive, and this is 1 squared, which is just 1, so it's 1 plus 16, this is square root of 17 over 4. There you go, that's your x. And we're going to get two values of x because of positive and negative. At this point, there's not much we can do with it. There's not much we can do with it. We do not know what the square root of 17 is by heart, obviously. It's not a perfect square. We're not going to waste our time trying to do it manually, obviously. Pick up your calculator. You are, you are allowed the calculator in the exam. Pick up the calculator, figure it out, and if you do that, if you do all the calculation, you will see that positive one value, when you use positive 17 is going to be it's going to be 0.78, and then when you use a negative square root of 17, it's going to be negative 1.28.
those are the x values x is equal to this or this once we have the x values once we have the x values how do we go about finding the y value oh it's very simple once we have the x values how do we go about finding the y value well put in put it in either of the equation either put in the equation of the parabola or equation of the straight line and find the y coordinate so let's do that up here And you know, we know y is equal to x squared, but it's just very straightforward. So it's just going to be 0.78 squared. That's one value. Another value of y is going to be negative 1.28 squared. There we go. Or we could have put it substituted, or we could have substituted in the in the uh, equation of the straight line, but this is less work. And it comes out to be, unless I made a mistake, it comes out to be neg negative 1.28 squared comes out to be 1.6384. And this turns out to be 0 0.6084. And again, there is no other way to do this thing except by calculator. So don't try to waste your time doing it any other way. To sit there and multiply 78 by 78, just use the calculator 0 0.78 times 0 0.78. And that was it. That was it. We're going to do one more in the next video. We're going to do another problem with the same topic. We're going to call it part B. It's going to be for tomorrow. Same exact problem, same exact topic, same exact topic. One more example. An example of intersection of a line and a parabola, which we'll do tomorrow. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, if you if you if you're looking for a private tutor and if you would like me to help you, prepare uh, get you prepared for the exam. You can get hold of me at 1-800-808-PREP or at my email address prepsat at aol.com. Okay, bye now.